going to be talking about the Pokemon Adventure manga, the counterpart to the Hoenn video, which will be focusing on the Ruby Sapphire chapter, then the Emerald chapter, as well as the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire chapter. So what do you think about our two main protagonists, Ruby and Sapphire? I like it. Um, I like the... In the manga, I always love the manga uh, protagonists because they're so much different in the manga than they are in the game. They feel so much better and more fleshed out, in my opinion. I just right. wish that they kept the how they are in the manga into the game. But, you know, I know they can't do that because, you know, how different of a turn a manga is compared to the game. It's a lot more different. Right. And not to mention, like, the uh, how they are in the manga. If we were to, like, compare that, the fact of the matter is, like, we are the characters because the player is the protagonist, so we can't really, like, incorporate the character into a blank slate mm -hmm. that, the, uh, that the player uh, puts himself in. But, let's see. With, um, uh, with Ruby, right? I, w I was, like, surprised, like, man, okay, so this guy had an eye for beauty, and all he cares about is, like, winning the contest of Jodo. Uh, excuse me, not Jodo, of Hoenn. I said Jodo, because he, he's actually originally from Jodo. He moves from Jodo to Hoenn. Uh, so, he becomes a contest, like, superstar master, and Sapphire, the girl, she, what, collects all eight badges? But she doesn't, like, she doesn't fight in the league or anything. Uh, but I think it was that they made a bet, and it was just like, let's see who can, can achieve their goal first. And I think it was, like, in 80 days or something like that. I, I, I don't remember how long it, uh, their, the timeline is, but it's over the course of several, several months. Uh, although I love their, like, dynamic. Because, let's see, uh, Ruby, he's like a Chanta star, but he's originally a, he, well, not originally, but like, he is a gym leader's son. So, and he has a very good uh, battle, battle prowess. Like, he's like a battle prodigy. Uh, and like, he gets into the moment and like, he can hold us. Uh, and what was it? Sapphire, she isn't like that, but like she wants to become stronger. And it, it's it's funny because like they actually met each other when they were kids, you know? And they decided to change themselves for the other's sake. And I found that hilarious because uh, Ruby as he is now, he's like, is a lot more dainty. UD, all that kind of stuff. And then Sapphire is a lot more tomboyish. I mean, heck, when she was introduced, she was, what, covered in leaves as clothing? I don't know, she was, like, mm -hmm. hiding out in the like cave or something. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And then, but in the past, like, Sapphire was, you know, tri your, uh, like, iconic, like, dainty little girl, frilly dress or whatever, skirt or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then, we're, uh, Ruby was like the tough battling boy, uh, battling prodigy genius, and then what happened? The the Salamence attacks. <laughs> the Salamence attacks attacks them as a kid. Ruby like saves Sapphire, but like scares her. Um, and like. From that point on, after like their families don't meet each other for like five, seven years, I, I don't remember how long. They're just like, okay, I need to change myself. Uh, Ruby decides I'm going to become a little bit more quote unquote dainty, more uh, less rugged. And Sapphire decides uh, she needs to become stronger, so she doesn't have to be protected all the time. Right? And I found that hilarious that they did that to each other. Uh, change to accommodate the other and it just became their whole personality uh which isn't a bad thing but 
Like, they went the whole, like, arc until, like, Sitop was at the very end, where it was like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm that kid you met when you were a child, Sapphire. He pulls off the hat, reveals the scar. Remember that scene? Yeah. And she's like, oh, my sh No. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing I keep noticing is that, like, Ruby keeps sacrificing himself for stuff. It's always like, I'm gonna do this. Like, oh, like, oh, but the, the, uh, she, she's always, like, you know, kind of like, we're gonna do this together. And then he just, like, pushes her out, like, nope, I'm doing this. I'm sacrificing myself. And the, that, that, like, I get it, like, what she's trying to do, but, like, he doesn't fully consider how. I think, I forgot what chapter it was, but there was a point in time where she was so hurt by the betrayal that she lost her voice and was unable to speak for a few chapters. Like, that's how hurt she was. Like, the shock of it just made her lose her voice. I don't know the reason behind that, but, like, that, that's just how it was. Um, but, again, with the manga, they didn't sideline any of the characters. Uh, they actually made it so that they're actually useful. Uh, we, we talked about in one, uh, video, uh, wanted to release, uh, earlier, but Steven and Wallace being dual champions of the region, with Steven becoming the official one because Wallace stepped down, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, Dude, that fight against Groudon and Kyogre. Oh man, that was super cool because what they used the Lottie twins. They used the three Titans, Red Eyes, Red Rock, and Red Steel. Oh man. And they had they what was it? Wally and Norman? They went to awaken Rayquaza to calm it down. Man, that was that was a cool scene. The whole region had the world could have been just destroyed after that, but you're able to stop it. Man, man, off topic though, whenever Steven fight, he always has some good drip on, bro. He has some nice clothes <laughs> when he fights. Dude. That man goes, he goes in with a full tuxedo just to fight Pokemon. I'm just bro, saying, he has some good. nice drips yeah, to fight. Good. Yeah. Although, <laughs> Wallace is always like flashy looking. It's just hilarious. He takes, he takes on a, what was it, Ruby as his like apprentice. And it's great uh, that, like, they, again, with the manga, nothing ever goes their way all the time. Like, they have to go through some loss. I think there was one point where um, Ruby got so upset with one of his Pokemon, he said something he shouldn't have, and it ran away. But then, like, when it really needed to, like, when it when it mattered, it was the, it was the Feebas. Uh, oh, yeah. He's always trashing on the feedbacks. <laughs> really? And then, and then, uh, comes back as a Milotic. He's like, oh my god, she's so pretty. Look at my pretty Pokemon, you know? So. <sighs> the Let's see, I, their, their team is, their team's alright, but, like, looking at it, it's, it's, the, the team composition isn't that impressive, I'll be honest. Your team's the uh, same as in the game, right? Pretty much well, the same. Uh, no, not, not, not entirely. I mean, there are some of that overlap. But let's see. So there's... <coughs> Excuse me. So... Ruby's final team consists of... of Swampert, Delcaddy, uh, Mighty Yenna, Milotic. I think he used Cast Form. Cast Form for like a little bit, but I'm not sure. It wasn't permanent. Uh, he used Cast Form for the beauty contest because Milotic wasn't there. Uh, Let's see what up. Oh, they also used plus one mining for a little bit. I remember that. Oh. Uh, let's see. What the hell is the... 
Let me see. I'm trying to find this team. There's a mighty Anna named Nana, a, a uh, Del Caddy named Coco. He lent uh, the Gardevoir to Wally, I remember that. Name uh, Ruru. Zuzu, the, the Swampert. Mimi, the Melodic. Popo, the cast form. Oh yeah, he had Celebi for a little bit, and he also used Plusle. He also befriended Latios and Mega Latios. Oh, he also used Mega Diancy and rode along on uh, Rayquaza. Oh. That's right. Now, uh, let's see. Sapphire's team... Let me see here. Shit. Okay. Uh, here we go. So, Agron named Rono. Uh, Dorada, or Japanese. Chamo, the, <laughs> the torture. Long to blaze again. Oh, yeah. Toro. Tororo for the Tropius. Fadodo for the Don fan. That's right, I used the. She had a Glade for the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Oh. <clears throat> Glade. Uh, oh, that's right, he had a. He, he had a Whale Lord from her dad. And she had a Relicant that she caught to. That, that was how they uh, awakened the. The, le the, the legendary titans, the Reggies, because you need a Relicant, which is super rare to find, by the way, and a Wailord, which she got from her dad. She also used Minin. She brought with Electric, Watson's Electric. And, yeah, I mean. Uh, Neil Mega. Uh, the Ruby Sapphire chapter, pretty well done, uh, in my opinion. I, I, yeah. All the mangas from the Pokemon series, I didn't dislike any of them, to be honest. Even, like, even the <clears throat> generation I didn't think was too great, they made the manga really good. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely Omega, uh, the Hoenn chapter was really good. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, uh, the Emerald chapter. Now that one, where we, in we get introduced to Emerald, mm -hmm. the character Emerald. Man, the fact that, like, he beat all the Frontier Brain, it's great, because they're all, like, shitting on him. They're just like, oh, he's just a kid, blah, 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 he'll never win, blah, blah, blah. Oh, man, and that final scene against Archie, uh, because Archie was the one who was inside that armor, we had this whole talk how we thought like he killed Maxi or whatever. Yeah. Um, man, that whole scene was super cool because let's see. Uh it was all the uh by by the Emerald chapter, the Fire Red Leaper chapter had already occurred. So in, in the Emerald chapter, uh I don't, I don't even remember this, but at the end of the Fire Red and Leaf Green chapter, the Kanto protagonist, as well as the, uh, and I think Silver as well, the Kanto protagonist and, like, Silver, they were stuck in stone for a few months. And the Emerald chapter, Jirachi granted their wish to free them. So they were freed. And then they beat Archie, who had summoned, like, a fake Kyogre. Or like had a lot of power as well. The Saint Cohen. Uh, they used it against uh, that Kyogre, and it, they all used what was it? <sighs> Frenzy Plant, Hydro Cannon, and Blast Burn. All the respective users, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. I, I like. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, the. 
going into the manga adaptation, I it's it's so different from what the anime pro um, pertains, but it's a good different. It's not like oh yeah, whereas like they change it so much where like I don't understand it. It's a good different where where you feel more for the characters and you get to understand more about themselves. Oh yeah, and not to mention, but like with the manga itself. I feel like all the uh, unlike Ash, at least they evolved their Pokemon. <laughs> like, what's with Ash and not wanting to evolve his Pokemon? Like, most of the manga characters, uh, they have fully evolved Pokemon on their team. Mm -hmm. Fully evolved. Regardless if the whole thing was like, oh, I want them to say cute or whatever. Like, they fully evolved them. And they were useful. And I think, uh,. I think the manga panels will actually like tell them their levels or something. I think the Kanto, the Kanto team, like they're in like the eighties and nineties as they should be, uh, but they're high level Pokemon. Um, although some of the levels is just kind of funny. It'll be like Bold, for example, his team is in like the forties, and he beats he beats the the villains uh, at the end or something like that. But yeah, by this point, uh, the, the Pokemon they use are pretty representative of the region, which is very nice. Yeah, everything's fully evolved, and like, um, even with a fully evolved Pokemon, they, like, the, the battles they face, they're still rough. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know I said this before, but it was, I don't think there was any fun battle. I think they're like, they were mostly life and death. A lot of them was life and death. I mean, the only fun battles were probably the gym battles. Or just friendly, but like... Anyone that wasn't, like, an important character, they were either out to kill them, or to stop them, one way or another. Mm-hmm. So, I really like what the manga does in the adaptation. It's... It brings... Almost a sense of realism, even though you know you know Pokemon's not real, but like it brings a sense of urgency in the battle, where they know like it's not fun in games. You have to fight. You can't just be like oh, to these legendaries, like hey, help me out. Right. Oh, and like I get what you mean, but it's just because like they you feel their struggles, you understand what they're feeling. Because I mean, you gotta get through that sense of like realism that like this is something they have to. Like, suffer through, and, like, how they deal with it. That's, well, well, let's just see how they deal with it, you know? So, you can actually relate to their struggles, and it's great. That's why I really love the manga. And the Hoenn, the Hoenn chapters was my favorite. <laughs> favorite by far. Uh, the only thing that takes the uh, second place, it comes really close. There, It's really up there. It's really close. Um was the Sinnoh chapter. Like, the Sinnoh chapter was also really well done. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that Hoenn had the slight edge for me. That's why it's my first place. I I don't know. I don't know if I can rate these things. They're so good. Like, there's not a bad, like, series in the chapters. No. No, there isn't. I don't think. Yeah, like, the characters are flushed out for the most part. Battles it can be more at times, but for the most part, yeah. Yeah, I don't. There wasn't a bad one. All of them were good. I mean, you can say either or is your favorite, but like, you can't deny like none of them. All of them were good. None of them like. There wasn't a manga I read into this point where I'm like, I hated that series. They were good. Mm -hmm. And I was very surprised because you know it's Pokemon, but it's just like they they did a good job. It's definitely worth a read, especially for you know like veteran people who have like played the game watch the anime sh itself and read you read the manga you you definitely sense like oh my god it's so much different like i'm glad they made this adaptation because um rat then because you have the anime point of view that you watched and then you have the manga point of view and i'm pretty sure some veteran people be like they like the manga adaptation because it gives a more sense of like realism what what they wanted to see in the anime but they couldn't ad adapt because you know mm -hmm. all that stuff if if we could actually get that animated, that would've been so good, man. Mm -hmm. Sure, but sorry. 
So the manga arc for Hoenn as a whole, what would you rate it? A nine. I liked for me, it. I liked it. I I I, I give it a ten. I don't think I like. This might be the only ten out of ten I'll give, just because how how much I enjoyed it. Mhm. Mm the 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 whole uh, series it the manga part it gives everything like character like a uh, character and death for each person. Um, it gave it gave me even gave a little bit of romance between the two main protagonists, and just a sense of the battles, the villains, everything just felt so. They all felt impactful. There weren't really a part where well, I mean, you could say just a little bit part where it's like oh that chapter wasn't needed, but like mostly they all were very good.